Hi everyone, I'm Alicia Toot from A Music Blog Yeah, and I'm very excited to be sitting here with Jack Stedman from Bombay Bicycle Club. Thank you for speaking with us today. Oh, I'm very, very privileged to be here. <laughs> We've come full circle. We have. I mean, um, just for the Ambi readers at home, my first ever video interview was actually with Jack Stedman, and um, I came in with two questions when they're playing Echo Beach. So two questions, my first in person ever, and um, I was very nervous. It pretty much scared the hell out of me to <laughs> be speaking with a band that I loved so much. So um, I just want to say uh, thank you for handling that first experience so well and making it so easy for me because I mean that really inspired me to go forward and. Uh, Kind of take me where I am today, so yeah, nice. I appreciate it. You didn't seem nervous at all, I thought it was very professional. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so um, I do want to start talking about, of course, your album. So you released So, sorry, so Long, See You Tomorrow um, in February. So um, just tell me a little bit about the record. It has more of a worldly feel to it than your past album, so uh, what inspired that? Um, well, I, I guess from this record, I, I, I went away a lot, rather than writing it all in London. And... It's, it wasn't some big cliche like I went to India and found myself and, you know, started learning the sitar. Um, but wherever I go, I always go record shopping. And so it naturally, you know, when you're making music that's heavily reliant on samples, you know, the places you go and the record shops you visit are going to shape the sound. Mm -hmm. And there's there's at least four songs on the record that all have samples taken from Indian pop music. Some more subtle than others, but mm -hmm. it's it was that kind of you know just getting out there and 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 um, just buying some records that you'd never really listened to before. That was the main drive behind it then, right? Yeah. All right, very cool. And now that the album's actually gone number one, I have to say congratulations. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> who that was? But hopefully they're okay back there. Um, no, but I just want to say congratulations on that. That's amazing. So. Um, just as far as the number one goes, uh, what would you say is the next thing you'd like to check off your bucket list, achievement-wise? Um, we've we've never really had like uh, that kind of bucket list. We've always been that kind of band that is just super content with where they are, mm -hmm. and that's not even a good thing. That's like <laughs> that means we're really complacent and we're just always kind of just satisfied. Um, so the number one thing just came as a complete shock to us, yeah. and every time we you know move up to a bigger venue or or you know, s sell out a, a venue, or, or just do some sort of improvement. We're always just taken aback and say, "Hey, that's pretty cool." Mm -hmm. But we're not the most driven band in the world. We are playing a sold-out show tonight in Toronto at the Danforth Music Hall. So, um, just since you've been touring for quite a long time, what does the band do for fun while on the road? Well, there's a couple of things. Ed and Jamie do a little fitness program called Insanity, which I have n I had to do that in school, and it was. Torture. I hated it. They always come back to the dressing room looking like they've, I don't know, gone to hell and back. But I've got nothing to do with that. Um, we tried to bring a ping pong table on our last UK tour. Yes, I saw that. Um, um, sometimes we just, if we're kind of feeling like we need some extra momentum during the show, we'll do something called stage dares, where everyone gets to dare someone else to do one thing on stage. And if you don't do it, then you have to have a quadruple shot. As soon as you come off stage. What's the craziest thing someone's dared you to do? Me. Um, I had to. I was performing Eyes Off You. Very intimate moment of the set. Just me on the piano. And at the end of the song, while I'm playing the outro on the piano, I had to start scat singing <laughs> and keep a straight face. So there was this uh, super emotional moment. And everyone in the crowd was so silent and respectful. And then all of a sudden, I just go. And everyone in the crowd is just looking at each other like, what the fuck is this guy doing? You didn't explain anything, it just... No, you just have to keep you keep a straight face and continue. Okay. Um, and, I mean, you've uh, pretty much gone to... Well, you, you've toured America a few times now. So, um, is there anything that you do specifically when going back to a city? I mean, do you have any rituals when diving back somewhere else? In this town, we definitely do. Sandwich? And we've already done it. <laughs> Jason's turned up with a, a big, big bag of California sandwiches, the veal sandwich, and rounded off with a couple of Timbits. Um, yeah, we we kind of have, it's mostly, mostly food-based. I think when we last, I last yeah, talked to you, I just talked about food. Pretty much. So you, you already know how it is with us. Uh, everywhere we go, we're like, oh, what's good to eat in that town? Mm -hmm. And we just, we gain a lot of weight on tour. 
And um, then I just have one last Turian question for you. Last night when we were talking after your Sugar Beach session, you told us you have a couple surprises you're going to throw in to um, some of your upcoming performances. So can you just let us in on that just a little bit? Um, well, it's all to do with the visuals. And it's, it's heavily inspired by the album artwork. Oh. I guess that's my clue. So everyone who sees these guys on tour, make sure you look out for that. <laughs> um, so before, or when we found out we were initially sitting down with you, uh, we sent out a tweet, which Jamie actually tweeted from your Twitter page, and it was, who has questions for the band? And we had a little surprise person reply in those tweets, and it was Louie. So, here we go. <laughs> you wanted to ask, why won't you let him wear hats? Why won't I let him wear hats? Yes. Because he looks completely daft when he wears a hat. <laughs> And I get off the bus in the morning and I look at it and I think, oh, that that's nice. just not right, <laughs> you know, visually. Um, but I think that he's just using me as, the, you know, the scapegoat because he secretly doesn't want to wear hats. No, wear <laughs> and he used to have long hair and now he's got it cut and everyone's very, very happy about that. And mm -hmm. he's, I think he's feeling more comfortable with it himself. And um, I don't think we have to have the hat conversation anymore. Okay. I think he's he's totally like become at one with himself. And that sums it up. All right. <laughs> and another question that came up is, uh, we know that all of the members in the band have rap names. And the most infamous one is probably D. Twain. So just how exactly did that come to be? How did these rap names come about? Well, D. Twain... D. Twain was just some ramblings that I was doing in a song called Swansea. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone said that sounds like a rapper's name. And it was around the time of our first ever sort of adventure into Seren's rapping, which is something we used to do on the tour bus. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Jay Stiller, nephew of Jay Diller. Um, Lucy Rose was Juicy Hose. Um, Ray Morris is Cray Maurice. And Fast Eddie. I mean, it's it's hard to remember where they... I mean, we obviously weren't 100% lucid when we came up with the names. So some of them have lost, got lost down the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scholars, years ago, lost the translations. <laughs> All right. Um, now, something we wanted to bring up is a lot, like many of our readers are actually in bands. And uh, we feature them multiple times throughout the week. We have this segment where they talk about themselves and introduce themselves to our readers. And when they talk about their influences, Bombay come up, I'd say, one in every three pieces. So you've inspired a lot of bands. So we were just wondering, what advice would you give these up-and-coming indie bands, um, advice about the industry? The industry? Um, my biggest piece of advice is to get yourself a manager that you trust and that you like and that knows you well and get to know them. And then never let, never let them go. All the people that I've met and that I'm friends with who are artists, all the problems I can just sort of, they all can stem from the fact that their management wasn't on the same level as them mm -hmm. and they didn't trust them. And you could have avoided all of these issues with just the right person looking after you. And I feel like we've avoided so much of that, having someone like Jason, yeah. who we've known for almost nine years now. And when we met, we were 15, and we've kind of grown up with him. And he just, he really looks out for us. And you get so many managers that are in it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And they think it's really cool to manage a band and avoid those people, basically. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you for sharing that with everyone at home. Um, yeah, so that just was the last question of the interview. And I just want to say thank you so much to Jack for speaking with us today. We appreciate it loads. And just, yeah, to wrap things up, I'm Alicia Toot from Music Blog, yeah, and you just watched our interview with Bombay. Thanks very much, everybody.